something to eat, you know, something nachos for lunch or, or whatever it is. Things like that can be really beneficial. And just sitting and talking with your kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really important too. Simple rewards. Um, tell me, mm. are your kids uh, watching uh, the channel that you are that you are part of at the moment? We've tuned in a couple of times, yes. <laughs> and loved Karen O'Leary's um, Karen's Home. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Um, and so there, there hasn't been any uh, any shaming from the kids around around any of the activities or anything like that? Um, no. <laughs> but as they say to me, oh, mum, you're off to a meeting. Are you going to shake your bum at this one? And invariably, <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to, to, a, to do a presentation somewhere. Yeah. And I'll have to sing, which we haven't done yet, Jacinda. We'll do that later. Um, and I have to sing, but I generally get them to do head, shoulders, knees and toes. And I've had that at council meetings and all kinds of things. It's a great way of breaking the ice and yeah. getting them into the kind of presentation that I'm about to give. And um, it invariably in, involves some kind of cunny cunny where we wiggle our bottoms. So maybe That's we could do that later too. <laughs> I'm glad this is a seated interview. <laughs> are you picking up, I mean, a lot of people are picking up ideas from you. Are you getting feedback from parents or children with their ideas for um, yeah. the education channel? Have any favorites you want to share? Oh, look, I've been getting a lot of photographs of kids who have created their own rain gauges or their graphs and things like that. And a gorgeous little video of a young girl who created a um, coronavirus out of an orange with um, cloves. So she stuck cloves in there and I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. Mm, might have to use that for the show. Are you using these ideas at all? What's that? Are you using any of these ideas that you're getting directly from kids? At the moment, I've seen things that they're doing that are based on my activities. So now I need to do what I do at, uh, at the end of Susie's World and say, hey, if you've got any questions you'd like me to investigate, please send me an email, susie at susie.co.nz. <laughs> well, for any um, parent or kids out there listening, I hope that they send, drop you a little line with some of the things they might like to see on, um, on the podcast. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. One of the main questions I got, Susie, when I said that I'd be talking to you, one of the dominant themes was the question around whether or not you would permanently be on our screens. Uh, doing the same kind of things that you're doing now as part of COVID. People want to see you more often. So tell us about your plans for the future. Well, that's a really good question. I think a question mark hangs over all of us with what's happening in the future. But um, look, I've never stopped making kids content. I've got a kids radio show that's on 25 radio stations around the country. So it's on a Saturday or Sunday morning. And it's all your old favorite songs and stories from when we were growing up, you know, Flip the Fire Engine and Little Toot and a lot of local content, the dumb music that's been created by local artists. And um, we've... Um, what am I trying to say here? Oh, I've, I've got a YouTube channel. And so I've been making a lot of arts and crafts for kids and getting kids involved in it as well, which is fantastic. And um, I would love to be back on television full time. So I would love to have a team together again to create content like this. At the moment, there's just my husband and I, and we've luckily got an editor or two involved now. Um, but just to have a team that's creating stuff that's engaging kids and getting them interested in their environment and their communities, mm, that's a, a wonderful dream of mine. Well, in the meantime, though, of course, uh, if you've already got content up on your YouTube channel, we'll make sure that we post it below so that if people want to get any additional uh, content for their kids, um, that they can jump online. What kind of age range uh, are you catering for on your YouTube channel? Um, we're catering for kids up to about the age of 12, kind of what we're doing with the, um, with my science and math segments for the learning channel. And Susie, while I'm here, I mean, you're using a lot of educationalists to create the content that we're seeing at the moment, but I've also had uh, uh, teachers themselves asking for um, advice. Here's Alan, he says, how about Susie's number one piece of advice for teachers moving from face-to-face -face learning to distance? Because obviously that's an experience you've got using uh, either online or, uh, through screen platforms. What's, what's your tips for distance learning? Well, I guess the thing, you're going to be working with a camera the kind of way you are at the moment, just under and I am as well with that here in my own bubble. So it's picturing the person that you're talking to and imagining the facial expressions that you're going to get back and going, hmm, am I going to get a, what's going on look? Or um, 
is the child going to be nodding with me and going, oh yeah, I get that. So it's about using your imagination and picturing the child there and engaging with that child. Yeah. Doesn't matter what age the child is. And that's probably something for that face-to-face -face as, as communication as always, same principle. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So if you're taking out of the classroom into the camera, and it's the same as you would with a Zoom, and it's that whole delay too when people are talking and, and things like that. It's um, taking a breath in between each answer and letting that other person have a chance to react and, and that sort of thing. So what are, through COVID-19, I've been asking people, what is it that you hope that we remember or hang on to from this period going forward? What is it that you hope that we remember for kids, young people and their learning? I would like to think that from this, we take away a sense of community and that we have a better understanding of our whānau and our place within our whānau and that we have a stronger sense of who we are because as individuals and as also as a nation because I guess the way we have done this together in lockdown has brought us all together in so many ways. I love this walking down the road at the moment, getting a, a bit of fresh air um, outside my bubble, is the eye contact and the waves and calling out into the end of people's driveways and things like that. You're not going to get close to them, but you're making contact in other ways because you're all in it together. Mm. Um, so I think that's really, really special. And the time that we're spending with our fun now, mm. make it fun. As, as much fun as you can. If you're having any issues, if you've got any stresses or concerns, if you're feeling that you're not coping, that you feel that you need to take out uh, your anger in any way, get help there are so many wonderful help lines available um i please please get help and um and and do try and make the most of it breathe through it and and let it go as much as you can because it is a finite time okay we don't know exactly what that time is but it is only a finite time and our our new normal will bring new challenges and new opportunities to to be a community and and to to enjoy our final it sounds to me, so there's a fantastic advice. And the first time I remember ever hearing you talk about issues like this and making sure that people are looking after themselves when uh, was when we were both at an event where we'd been asked to read out a letter that we'd written to our 16-year-old selves, I think it was. Um, and your letter to yourself was so moving. I just wondered if you could just share your thoughts on, on looking after yourself through um, this period uh, and just that personal well-being. Wonderful. Okay, well, the, the best way to uh, for me is just taking time out for myself. So I am lucky because I have my husband at home so that I can get out and get into my bubble. But there's also that whole thing of making sure that I have a moment where I can pick up a book or I can go out and, and dig in the garden or, or making the most of that time out by the washing line. And one thing I've done for years and I encourage my kids to do is to breathe. <laughs> it sounds really strange thing to say, but it's that whole deep breathing down into your solar plexus. And I try and do this at night. But at the moment, the hours that I'm doing, I tend to hit the pillow and I'm gone. But it's about taking that moment just to clear the head and just breathe through it all. Replacing the wine bottle with a water bottle is a really good idea because uh, we never function very well when we've got a hangover. And I know that uh, people have gone, oh my goodness, I need a wine to get me through this. Um, and I know it's all good and fun and jest, but it's about making sure we're, we're having lots of water, that we're getting lots of fresh food and fresh air. Open up those windows if you're in, a, in an apartment or if you're able to get out into the garden and go for a walk, take the far now with you and mm -hmm. find a park that everybody can race around and keep away from the playgrounds. But um, yeah, get the... Go and find a puddle and splash in it and, and find the inner child. If it hadn't been for the playgrounds being shut down, I'd say go on a swing because that's what I did with Dancing with the Stars every now and then because it was so stressful. On my way on the drive home, I just went and swung on the swing and just let the wind blow through me and just that kind of thing. It's taking time out for yourself and being kind to yourself, being gentle. Everything is going to be okay. Oh, no cry. Ooh. Oh, wonderful, wonderful advice. Advice to live to I too, Susie, and not just through COVID. This is um, exactly the kind of self-care that I hope people remember after this as well. So thank you for reminding us. Oh, Jacinda, hopefully you have time to be looking after yourself too with all that you and the hours that you're doing and all, all the responsibility that you have on your shoulders. Oh, I am very lucky. I have in my bubble um, Clark and I also have my mum. So 
I'm very well looked after. But ah, thanks. yes. Your mum put together that wonderful lunchbox that you shared on your Facebook page. How wonderful. She was mortified about that. She was really upset that you could see that the banana had turned and was... <laughs> She said, you've got to go and tell everyone. I meant it for a smoothie. She was oh, right. <laughs> hey, thank you, Susie, so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. And thank you so much for what you're doing for all kids around New Zealand right now. Just giving that sense of calm and consistency and fun in a time that's really tough. So thank you so much. Hey, it has been my pleasure. Thank you. See, oh, you, see you later. <laughs> see you. <laughs>